Everybody wants to see the details. That's why I'm going over all the details. Everybody wants to hear what the details are. Look, don't overthink this. People just, you know, screw themselves in the ground. This is no big deal. These intersections, don't overthink it. You see what we did. The guys nailed it. This is a beautiful installation, clean. Went ahead, zip tied all the tubing together. What an amazing system. The air pocket that this creates. We always tell the customers, no non-woven geotextile filter fabric, you're gonna have a failed French drain. One third of the drains we put in are to replace failed drains, so we know what failure looks like. And it looks like a French drain that doesn't have non-woven geotextile filter fabric to separate the subsurface soils from the aggregate. We're in Shelby Township, Michigan, putting in another French drain system for a home. We're gonna add 80 more feet of French drain to this homeowner's backyard. We're digging out a French drain system. We're hauling away all the dirt. We're not gonna put any of the dirt back in. If the dirt was permeable and it was worth anything, we probably wouldn't be here. Non-permeable soil is job security for us. We're gonna run another French drain right here. The water likes to lay right up in here. Guys are doing a curtain drain around this garden area so they can grow potted plants and water them and it won't be a problem. We'll grab all the excess water that's leaching out of that garden area. Then we have a discharge line that we're running to a storm drain. This is a beautiful French drain. Look at the guys dug out all that soil. They hauled it all the way. You don't see piles of soil on either side of the trench. That's because we're getting rid of all the soil. We're not gonna keep any of the soil. Now the men cut the sod off and they cut it off with a few inches of dirt. We're gonna be able to grow grass on this French drain. Look at this. Not all sod cutters cut that deep. Our sod cutter cuts that deep. Beautiful job. Really nice dig, really nice excavation. They have good slope down to the storm drain. We're gonna have to core and tap this storm drain. None of the soil's worth keeping. If it was permeable, we wouldn't be here. It's real heavy soil. Water just sits on top. Water gets stuck in the turf grass. It won't drain to the storm drain. Plus, storm drain catch basins are set up for bulk water on the surface. They're set up for flood water. So if it's raining really hard and we got water running down this grade, it has to be a lot of water that can actually go in the storm drain catch basin into the grade. Everything that's left laying in the grass, which there's a lot of water left laying in the grass that can't find its way. Water that's stuck in turf grass, the only way you're gonna get it is to build a system like we're building here. You guys how we're gonna build this one. When the guys get this completely dug out and get it fully excavated, I'll show you with all the piping what it looks like. This is four ounce, non-woven, geotextile filter fabric, and this has been double punched. There is just thousands and thousands of little holes in this. When you look really close at this fabric, you can see all the little holes. There's been just thousands of little holes punched in this fabric. So many guys don't use fabric because they buy into 
the fabric's going to clog. The fabric's not going to work. Well, I'll tell you what. If you don't use a soil separator, separate the subsurface soil from your aggregate, you gave your system an expiration date at the time of install. When you don't have all these holes punched in your non-woven geo textile filter fabric, it will not drain. So a lot of guys have bad experiences because they don't buy the right fabric. They don't want to spend the money to buy the right fabric. If they get a client that says, hey, I want you to add fabric, I see their videos and I see what they're using. They're doing a couple of things wrong. They'll either use a DOT approved fabric, which the DOT fabric has changed. A couple of years ago, they changed it. So we had to change our fabric and we couldn't use DOT approved fabric anymore. They wanted to up the tinsel strength. So the DOT has different requirements now. It doesn't work for yard drain fabric as well. So if you're buying DOT approved fabric, stop doing that. You want to buy a heavy, non-woven geotextile filter fabric that's four ounce for best results, and you want it to be double punch. We put in a request to have our fabric manufactured a certain way. Fabrics are purpose built. They're built to certain specifications. There's hundreds and even thousands of fabrics. It is so easy to take all of your sweat equity, all of your hard work, and all the money that you put into the materials to build a French drain system with all the best intentions. And one miscue by using the wrong fabric and you're gonna have all kinds of problems. You're gonna be very disappointed in the results. I want the water to be able to come in this pipe from the bottom, from the sides, and from the top. But when you remove that much wall stock, you end up with a weaker pipe. So what did we do? We increased the wall stock. The wall thickness of this pipe, this extra heavy duty, is absolutely ridiculous. The added material that goes into this pipe to give it that kind of strength is worth the expense, guys. If you're going to do all this hard work, put in a pipe that's going to stand the test of time and give you the best performance. Put in a fabric that's going to stand the test of time and give you the best performance. This pipe has holes all the way around it, 360 degrees. People are always watching my videos and they see the holes on top. And they're like, hey, holes are supposed to be on the bottom. Well, they're on the bottom. They're all the way around the pipe. They're on the sides. They're on the bottom. They're on the top. There's eight holes all the way around this pipe. You can't have more inlet than what we have. That pipe right there was purpose built for yard drains. It has more inlet than any other pipe on the market, and it's a heavier pipe than any other pipe that you can use for yard drainage. All right, the guys are just finishing up putting in the non-woven geotextile filter fabric. We're gonna get two of our extra heavy duty eight slot high octane yard drain pipes in at the bottom. And then we're gonna put three of our three inch. Now these pipes are virgin material, and what that means is there's no recycled material. This here is a virgin pipe. It's three inch and it's perforated. You can see the deep saw cuts, the deep perforations in this pipe. So the three inch works really, really well is what we've learned. When you take two four inch pipes and you put them on the bottom and you try to put two more four inch pipes on top of that, sometimes if you, if you haven't gotten to where you're like 16, 18 inches deep, if your trench is not 16, 18 inches deep, you're not gonna be able to do a quad pack, which is two rows of four inch pipe, which we build a lot of quad packs as well when we get that deep. Again, this, this drain is not that deep. It's gonna have two four inch pipes on the bottom, and then it's gonna have three three inch pipes on top. Again, that's dictated by its depth. And you can see this pipe has more inlet than any other pipe on the market, and has a thicker sidewall than any other single wall corrugated pipe on the market. Special built just for yard drains. This is what it takes to have a French drain system that is gonna stand the test of time. We wanna get a lot of really good performance. If the trees try to root in this, I want it to be able to air prune the tree roots off. So we have this nature scape is what we refer to this as. This is surrounded by nature scape. These tree roots eventually will find their way into your French drain system. Well, during the drought season, you can air prune the roots off. We have so much inlet, this pipe is so ventilated 
because there's so much ventilation, we're going to be moving so much air in this system. Any roots that get in that system during the rainy season, we'll air prune any roots off that got into the system. So the guys, to start out the French drain system, just put in an end cap like this. This is a virgin end cap that snaps in. It does not come off. It's barbed. You're not going to get it off. The barb of it snaps up. When you go to push it in the corrugated pipe, this is made to where it springs down. And then once it snaps in place, it springs up and locks it into the corrugated pipe. There's nothing better to start your French drain system than this end cap. So we just refer to this layer of three three inch pipes as our filter media. You know, we're just putting a filter media in between the stone and our main pipes that are gonna flow the majority of the water. And that's the two blue pipes on the bottom. Now we get a lot of questions about these two blue pipes on the bottom. How do you guys connect them? The two blue pipes on the bottom don't have to be connected. Let me explain why. We're not flowing any solids through this. It's a fully contained system. It's not gonna have grass blades and bark mulch, sediment flowing through it, it's not. We're doing a fully contained system. We're gonna wrap this system so that no sediment, no bark, no grass blades, no leaves can get in it. So we're just grabbing up water, that's it. The system is made to filter out all the sediment, all the impurities, all that stuff's gonna be filtered out before the water makes it down to the two bottom pipes. Now these two bottom pipes, because they have so many holes in the top, the sides, and the bottom, however high the water's in one pipe, that's how high it's gonna be in the other. Water seeks level. So as the water flows down to the storm drain, and this is a really good shot, look what we do. So we'll just put another one of those end cap We'll snap in an end cap on that one piece of pipe. The water that's moving in this pipe will move in that pipe. You can see the guys did a beautiful job with their corn tap. So you always wanna use this water stop hydraulic cement. This is what we use right here. And this is what they want you to use. If you ever have your work inspected, you have to use this hydraulic cement. When you do a corn tap, you want to use a PVC sleeve and you want to use the hydraulic concrete on both sides. Beautiful job. The crew's done an amazing job. Great work. Now, if you have some sprinkler lines, it's kind of a pain and it's one of the occupational hazards in this business that you're going to be dealing with a lot of sprinkler lines. You're gonna to have to cut the sprinkler lines and you're gonna to have to run those sprinkler lines up and over your main pipes. Usually you're too deep to have your main pipes on top of your sprinkler system. It's usually not gonna work. Over here on this branch, you can see they got uh, two of those end caps snapped in, virgin end caps that are mold injected, strong non-recycled again that's just where we stand right now we keep testing and testing recycled products we keep testing them and I, I i do think they're getting better and i do think eventually they're gonna they're gonna figure it out beautiful job you guys are doing a really nice job So you can see how they went ahead and put this filter media in. They got a pipe here on the outside. Let me show you how this looks. And then they come into the main. They take that pipe all the way to the storm drain catch basin. Again, we're just trying to create all kinds of air so that if these tree roots penetrate the system, they're gonna have trouble trying to survive in this system. Now, the non-woven geotextile filter fabric will be some help when it comes to tree roots. This is what I have observed. What I've observed with these non-woven geotextile filter fabric systems is when the tree roots get to the filter fabric, they kind of run, run along the fabric. 
they'll just run parallel with the fabric basically they have a hard time getting in the tree roots will eventually if they're persistent enough of course if there's water in your system especially if you didn't build your system with a lot of air and it stays damp and it stays wet and it doesn't dry out they'll make it in there they'll start out as threads and they'll get bigger and bigger and eventually it'll tax your system your system will work less and less each year until one year it doesn't work anymore that's what that looks like so we're going to make sure that we have all this air so if we have this cedar tree which is very aggressive this root system is extremely aggressive and it can sniff out water one we don't want any water left in the trench people always say how come you don't put stone in the bottom of your trench well i don't want to put stone in the bottom of my trench because that pocket of stone is going to hold water and then this cedar tree for example is going to be really happy it's going to love that it's going to sniff it out it's going to get in that layer of stone that's holding water that pocket of stone underneath the pipe we like to lay our pipe on the bottom we put our pipe on the fabric and then we go ahead and backfill it with stone once we get all this pipe zip tied and put together all right, look at this. This is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Two four-inch pipes on the bottom, three three-inch pipes on top. Guys did a beautiful job, really nice. So the outside pipe goes this way, the outside pipe to this branch goes this way, then the inside pipe just runs right on the inside of the system. Everybody always tries to connect these and they ask how do you connect them you don't have to they don't have to be connected there's holes in this pipe it's perforated pipe there's holes all the way around this pipe so the water is just going to flow through the system it's going to move through the system it's all going to fall to the bottom four inch pipes guys doing a beautiful job this is an amazing job the guys are doing an incredible job this french drain is going to stand the test of time this french drain it's going to last a lifetime. The homeowner's never going to have to worry about this. If and when they ever do sell their house in their lifetime, they can do it with confidence. They don't have to disclose that there was a water problem because there's no longer a water problem. There's been a great system put in place taking care of the yard water. So we got 160 feet of the four inch pipe on the bottom because it's 80 feet of trench and we have two pipes at the bottom. We got 240 feet of the three inch pipe. Guys are doing a great job. Now we're gonna put some end caps on the three inch pipe just so they don't fill up with stone. Just wanna keep those pockets of air we want to keep these pipes holding a big pocket of air. If this house ever gets sold and then this garden is not just potted plants on stone and they go ahead and they start planting ornamental trees, I've seen that type of thing. I want this system to be protected for whatever happens and whatever lies ahead in the future. We've never had one of our systems fail and it's because we always put two pipes on the bottom. I can't express enough how that holds you to a tolerance that builds such an amazing drain. If you just trench it and you put one pipe in, you're gonna have a drain that works, as long as you don't put the dirt back in. But if you have trees in that yard, you have roots in that yard that you have to worry about, you want two pipes on the bottom. It's a better drain all the way around, not just for getting rid of the tree roots and discouraging all the trees from rooting inside it, but you're gonna have a better drain that works more efficient. You're gonna be happier with the results if you have two four inch pipes on the bottom. We hold ourselves to that tolerance because we end up with a much better French drain when we dig it out a little wider and we have room for two four inch pipes on the bottom. If you're a homeowner and you're hiring a contractor to do this installation for you, hold them to that tolerance. You tell them you want two four inch pipes in the bottom of your French drain system. I'm gonna be really honest with you. If you put two four inch pipes in the bottom of your French drain system and you use a non-woven geotextile filter rep fabric that's been double punched, four ounce for a really good flow rate, 
after that, boy, man, you really have to work at it to screw it up. We have all this tubing, and we don't want the subsurface soil to mix in with our system. If you have the subsurface soil migrating into your system, it's going to clog it, and it's not going to flow water, and it's just going to be a matter of time before it fails. All right, so the men are zip tying all the tubing together. We have two four inch pipes in the bottom, three three inch corrugated perforated pipes on top of that. The guys have end caps on everything. We don't want stone to fill any of the pipe. We're trying to keep all that air space. Look at how nice that is. Amazing, beautiful work by a really talented crew. The details matter, and these guys get all the details right. So look, don't overthink this. You got a pipe on the inside, and you run it the full length. You see how that pipe on the inside runs the full length right along here? Then the pipe on the outside, you know, they just run the pipe on the outside over to the storm drain. And then the one in the middle, don't, don't overthink this. Look at what we got here. So right there, we have to dead end the one. The other middle one, we can take it to the storm drain. Run with the dominant. Always go with the dominant trench when you run your three pipes. This is the dominant trench right here. So we ran that center one on the longest length that we could. And it's running it from the storm drain right up through there. And then we come right to where we started our French drain. This is the beginning. You can see that we have end caps on the three inch pipes on top. We got end caps on the two four inch perforated pipes on the bottom. Everybody wants to see the details. That's why I'm going over all the details. Everybody wants to hear what the details are. Look, don't overthink this. People just, you know, screw themselves in the ground. This is no big deal. These intersections, don't overthink it. You see what we did. The guys nailed it. This is a beautiful installation, clean. Went ahead and zip tied all the tubing together. What an amazing system. The air pocket that this creates. That's a heck of a void. That's a, you fill this in with stone, you're not going to get that kind of air. You can't get that kind of air space out of stone. We've tried. You get up to like three inch round rock and then people feel like they're walking on baseballs in their yard. Trying to keep the trees out. Trees are your number one enemy of drainage systems in your yard. Tree roots will take out a system so fast. Make sure it's two pipes on the bottom, two four inch pipes on the bottom. Make sure they are well ventilated. We had those windows of perforations opened up so big on the blue pipe. You can see the perforations in the three inch pipe right there. See, we got perforations throughout the three inch pipe. Now, the bottom pipes are key. These are extremely important. So we pay extra to have a heavier sidewall and we pay extra to have the cutters stay in the, during the manufacturing of this pipe, they slow down the machine so that the cutters stay inside right where they open up these pipes. Look at that. You're not gonna find a pipe like that. That was purpose built, special made. Absolutely beautiful. So we go ahead and we put the stone on top. This holds all the tubing together. This locks it in place. It really doesn't matter what you use for stone, but I'm going to give you a couple of pointers. If you want your grass to root into the stone and to do really well, because you got to remember we have all those holes in our fabric. So the grass can root right down through the fabric into the stone. If you do go with like a three quarter inch stone like we have here, the grass will not air prune. Them. Because remember, if you build a system with a lot of air, you're going to have a really hard time getting the grass to grow. Well, this top layer of stone is three quarter inch. It will stay damp after a rain. It will stay damp after the sprinklers had watered it. And the grass roots will grow deep into the stone. We'll get six inches of root penetration because we got three inches of dirt on our sod 
and then we got four inches of stone underneath the sod. This is a beautiful system. Right here, this is addressing all the complaints that people have. That is a complaint that people have. Hey, the grass dries out too fast on top of my French drain system. Well, if you have a sprinkler system and you use a three quarter inch stone, you'll be able to grow a really nice turf right over top of your French drain. You can see how the stone, it pours between the fabric and the pipe. It falls between the tubing and the non-woven geotextile filter fabric, and then we end up with a nice layer on top. The non-woven geotextile filter fabric that we use comes in three foot, five foot, six foot. So we just take the fabric that we need. So this five foot by 100, look how nice this is. See how it's not a heavy overlap? This is key, this is key. You see how it's just a little overlap? See, you don't want this, you don't want this here to be all the way to the wall of the trench and all the way across and then have this go all the way to here because you're not gonna line up those double punched holes. We pay extra to have this double punched. You don't wanna take that quality away from the French drain system. And I see people do that all the time. You can't have a heavy overlap. You're not gonna get the water to flow. We do wanna encourage that the sod roots through this non-woven geotextile filter fabric so if it's not overlapped, it'll also grow through the non-woven geotextile filter fabric much better. The reason why you want those sod roots to grow through the fabric is it's going to move surface water into the system through capillary action. You're going to have gravity and capillary action. So that's going to work well. It's going to play really well in how your French drain performs. That's why all these little details matter. So when piecing the sod back together, if you cut it out with a sod cutter and you cut it really deep, then you take a shovel and you just keep cutting pieces that are manageable, they're easy to handle. You can see that's what the men did. They cut it with a sod cutter, then they would cut it with a shovel and then lay it over in sections. Because it's so thick and there's so much root and so much dirt on the back of the turf, it is really heavy. It really is, each piece is extremely heavy. So you have to do this in manageable pieces. You're gonna make the job so much harder if you don't do it this way. So I strongly encourage that you rent a sod cutter, set it on its deepest notch. Back when this yard was sodded, you can see that the sod, this, this topsoil, that was what the sod when the sod came here, that's all it was, was that little bit right there. I could tell by that black soil that this was what's known as peat back sod back in the day when it was laid. So we cut the sod with its original backing and some additional soil. Once it roots through the non-woven geotextile filter fabric, it's gonna work really, really well. Look at all the stone pours between the perforated pipe and the fabric, look at that. Really nice cutaway. Really nice cutaway. Beautiful. You can see the stone falling between the fabric and the perforated pipe. This installation is textbook. This is a perfect installation addressing all the concerns, tree roots, quality of turf that's going to grow up top being able to move the surface water when there is surface water through capillary action through the root system we have a non-woven geotextile filter fabric that's been double punched the roots can grow through it and then we have like a three-quarter inch stone where the roots can then live and survive in this you know four inches of stone that we're putting on top of the system So the size 
zip ties that the men were using, because this really helps to know this. The size zip ties that they were using, it was 36 inches in length. And they work out perfect. They work out fantastic. They really do. The men are extremely efficient. They excavated this trench, went ahead, cored the storm drain catch basin, put the fabric in, started putting in all the tubing. The tubing went in fast, it goes together quick. They go ahead, pull the fabric tight, pin it, and then lay the turf grass back on it. This is an extremely efficient crew. And these storm drains, I want you to see just how thick these, so the cement plug right here, that's how thick the concrete is. So this, this takes a little bit, that takes a little bit to get through that wall. They're usually 10 to 12 inches thick. Sometimes they got a lot of steel in them too. They really tear up a car, a core bit. They'll really tear up a core bit. Man. All right, so now you can see it. It's so obvious why two four inch pipes on the bottom and holding yourself to that tolerance builds such an amazing French drain. Look at that. And because we're using two four inch pipes on the bottom and three three inch pipes on top, you're not gonna have to bring in this unrealistic measure of stone. It actually cuts down on the amount of stone you need. This is a beautiful job. The guys just absolutely nailed it. So people ask all the time about these intersections and they just end up scratching their head going, how in the world do you do this? They're gonna fold this, they're gonna fold this, they're gonna pin it. There's gonna be a little piece they're gonna put over top of this. It's no big deal, don't overthink it. It's no big deal. The main thing is, is that it's fully contained. You're filtering out all the contaminants. You're not letting in any of the subsurface soil. Look at this, in no time flat. You guys seen an entire system put in. This is the morning job. The guys do have an afternoon job they're gonna be going to after lunch. This is incredible. This job is done before lunch. And that's loading up in the morning, you know, drive time, dispatching. Beautiful job. So our three quarter inch stone bin in our yard is right next to our inch and a half stone bin. <laughs> so, you know, we got a little cobblestone mixed in. I didn't want anybody to, in the comments section, say what's going on with that stone. That's all it is. We got one stone bin next to another stone bin and it doesn't make a difference if you get a little of that inch and a half mixed in with your three quarter stone. So Cal, he's cutting the extra fabric so that he doesn't have a heavy overlap. This is the stuff guys don't do. They don't take the time to do these little things. And look, he's only cutting three inches of fabric off. But he went through all of that just so that we don't have that heavy of an overlap because we want the turf grass to root through this. Now when you put the sod down and if you get a big rain, you're not going to take in surface water until the sod has rooted in. I tell people our systems work better and better, and that is why. The more the grass has rooted in through the non-woven geotextile filter fabric, the better it's gonna take in surface water. So keep that in mind. Too many times people put in a brand new French drain, and then they get a pouring rain like really, really soon, and the top is kinda wet. It's like, look man, until those roots are growing through all those little holes, giving the water a vein to drain through. Capillary action is an amazing thing. If you Google capillary action and just do a little bit of research on it, you'll be able to appreciate how that works. Water's just gonna follow those roots and it's gonna drain right into the stone. 
It's going to be very efficient once the sod is rooted through the non-woven geotextile filter fabric. So I'm showing this intersection on purpose because everybody's always in the comment sections talking about it. We're pulling these tight. We're pulling these tight. Over here, this has already been pulled tight and the sod's been put on top. There's going to be this little area in these intersections where you just lay a piece, you cut a piece, just overlap it a couple inches all the way around and then pin it down. That's it. This is a fully contained French drain system. No contaminants can get in this French drain system. The Virgin, G, we have our pipe that's made out of a Virgin HDPE. It's rated the last 200 to 500 years. A vein of stone, it's going to last forever, eternity. Nothing's going to happen to the stone. So I feel extremely confident in our systems going several lifetimes. Beautiful job. You're looking at one of the best crews in the country. They had slope on their trench. They had good pitch all the way to the storm drain. Just an incredible job by our, a crew that truly is a talent. I practically had the camera running the whole job because they went so fast that I was able just to capture it all in a short session. Extremely efficient. It takes longer to load up the materials, make it to the job, and to lay the turf mats down and stage the job than it does for the guys to put in 80 feet of French drain. They're already working their way out of the yard, very efficient. A lot of people ask, how big is your crew? This crew is a six-man crew. So a lot of times, the sod won't be of really good quality in areas that have had a water problem because low oxygen in the soil from all the standing water, you'll have some root rot. It's no big deal. Just piece it together. You can see right here, there's enough root and grass to grow. A really nice turf. Next year that's gonna look fantastic. So right here we're tied in. They already closed it up. For safety reasons you just want to close that up. We usually have kids that come out and watch. They love watching the ditch witches and the excavator and they're fascinated so we always got to be very careful of that, those open catch basins. Always have to be very cautious with those open catch basins because of the children that stand and, and just observe and, and watch the equipment. So, look at that. Can't even tell where the guys did all this work. Yeah, there's a painted line when we laid out the system. That's amazing, just really amazing. Beautiful job, beautiful job. Beautiful job, incredible job. So the guys do have some sod that's falling apart that had root rot. You know, you can see it was a lot, a lot of the grass had died back from no oxygen in the soil. They're able to piece it together and there's enough here. You come back next year and you won't even be able to tell. Holy smokes. I can hear water running already. And that's normal. That's normal to have like water running because now that we have this French drain in place to relieve all the subsurface soil of all that saturated soil, it just slowly fills up those bottom blue pipes and they just drain through that core in that sidewall, that storm drain. Man, that's it, man. Beautiful, beautiful job by an extremely talented crew. As we continue to work our way out of this yard, we were pretty deep in this yard and it took a lot of turf mats 
The guys will take a leaf blower and they'll blow this lawn. They'll stand it back up. If you don't leave the grass like that and you don't leave the turf mats down too long, it won't kill the grass. So this is 80 feet of French drain. This is a really big gooseneck trailer here. All that dirt came out. None of the dirt came back. None of that dirt went back in. So this trailer here, we have a couple of these trailers. So we're set up to come in. We're set up to come in and haul away 30 yards. You know, this F450 Super Duty does a really good job. We have some smaller dump trailers too for balance loads. We like to keep our stones separated. And this dump truck, I recommend the F550s for your dump trucks. Or if you're going to do Chevys, you know, the 45 or 5500s. Same equivalent. Beautiful job by an amazing crew. All right, the guys put some good grass seed down. It's a bluegrass blend that looks really good here in the north. And they threw some straw over top so that when it germinates, it doesn't dry out and die. We come back next year, this is going to look amazing. You won't even be able to tell we were here. Very efficient. Very efficient. Loaded up, tarped up. Chain down, strap down. The guys are securing their load. They have an afternoon job. They're gonna to go to the second job to take lunch. They got two of the SK-1550 side by side, along with a mini excavator and a bunch of turf mats. All chained down, ready to go, heading to the second job. The three most important things to a really good French drain system. Two four inch pipes on the bottom. A good non-woven geotextile filter fabric that's been double punched and I recommend a four ounce. And the third, and equally as important as the first two, make sure you haul away all the dirt. Don't put the dirt back in. It'll just clog the system and it'll slow it down and it won't perform well for you. If you follow those three things, it's next to impossible to screw up a French drain system. If you found any of this information helpful, give us a thumbs up. It supports the channel. I'm your host, Robert Sherwood, and until the next video.